Hello. We are live. Just prepping a few bits. Ready to be started in a couple of moments. I've just thrown everything flying. But we are live and uh, welcome to the broadcast. Um, but just while I get all my bits and bobs prepped, all my little paints and things, ready to go live in two minutes. If you want to paint along and learn some hints and tips, then why not join me? But I will see you in probably two minutes. See you shortly. I'm Matthew Palmer and my new book, The Watercolour Companion, is a hardback reference guide that you keep by your side at all times. The perfect size to fit in your watercolour kit. It's got pages of colour mixes, it's got reference images to work from, it's got what materials you need, how to paint finished pictures. This indispensable guide is designed to be by your side at all times on your watercolour journey. The book is available now. I'm Matthew Palmer and my new book, The Watercolour Companion, is a hardback reference guide that you keep by your side at all times. The perfect size to fit in your watercolour kit. It's got pages of colour mixes, it's got reference images to work from, it's got what materials you need, how to paint finished pictures. This indispensable guide is designed to be by your side at all times on your watercolour journey. The book is available now. Hello there and welcome to the studio. Yes, I am geared up now. I have a few things that went there, but yes, we are live. Welcome for a bit of a my top tips. Basically, I've been a watercolour artist now since I was about 10, 11 years old. I started painting in watercolour, so I'm talking a good few years ago. But we are live. Welcome if you're watching live. Thank you for this. And we're going to enjoy this, folks. You've just seen a bit of a introductory video to my brand new book, which is the Watercolor Companion. Now, I've been working with the guys at Search Press on putting this book together, so I wanted to show you the book. I'd love to show you the book. It is a beautiful thing, and the book is basically all about learning to paint and having a companion by your side. So if you want to pick up a copy of this new book, there's a link down in the description below. What it is, it is the Watercolour Companion. Techniques and tips to improve your watercolour painting. It's a hardback book with this elasticated bind that keeps it all together. And at the minute on Watercolour TV, um, you can actually purchase a signed and numbered first edition. First edition, this one's 243 with a certificate of authenticity. The book is all about a quick 
visual reference guide. And look, it's dedicated to you guys. <clears throat> this book is dedicated to all the artists I've taught over the years and those still to come. So here we've got all that beautiful information. And it, it kind of shows you here that the book is meant to be in your art kit. Has anybody received a copy of this book? It only came out last week, this week. So it's it's a lay flat book that is by your side. So let's say that you want to paint a clear sky. Oh, Matthew's got a book on painting clear skies. Clear sky, here it is. And it, it shows you the colours. Now these colours here are really key and pretty much every page has these colours on. What's different here to a normal book what you've got is the colours down the edge. So if we were to find one like this, for example, painting a distant woodland, it's got all the key tips and tricks. But here at the bottom, it shows you these circles. The darker circle inside is the colour when it's wet in your palette. Because if you're new to painting, you'll know that the colour when it's in your palette is very different to how the colour is um, when it dries. So it's wet paint dry paint that's on the edge of the page so you can lay it flat against your photograph you could even hold it up looking out thinking well yeah that's the color i'm looking at the tree in front of me here so it's a it's a visual guide and it even gives you the percentages of the actual um color that you need to mix as well so here you can see that this one has got six parts yellow three parts blue and one part red it shows you it's it is a visual guide look at that the perfect greens. It's a beautiful thing, folks. It's a lovely book. I'm so proud of this. And I know the guys at Search Press are proud as well. So pick up a copy. We've got the last few left of the first editions if you're not a chance to buy one. Reflections, skin tones from light to dark, painting figures, how to draw as well. And at the back, I'm not going to open that because this one will be sent out to somebody, is a pull-out picture finder as well. So that's a 9.99 book, folks. Do check it out. That is available to purchase. Um, if you go through the SAA as well, you can actually purchase it with a DVD. So saa.co.uk, you can buy it with a DVD as well. Now, let me talk about this workshop, and I will start painting shortly. On Sunday, just briefly want to mention this, 31st of July, we've got a koala bear workshop coming up. Paint a beautiful koala bear perched in a eucalyptus tree in watercolours. This is taking place Sunday the 31st of July, 2022. But there is one taking place pretty much every uh, weekend. Um, get yourself booked in. Have a look on the website, all the W's dot watercolor dot TV. This is how you book. You go to the website here, all the W's dot watercolor dot TV. And right at the top, you click book now. Um, and that will be the latest one that's happening. So in this particular case, as I'm live on the 20th of July, the latest one to the 31st of July, click it. And there it is, you can add to basket. It's a £10 workshop. And what's really cool about it is you can watch and paint along live or watch at any time. For £10, you will just need three colours and three brushes. You will paint a gorgeous picture of a koala bear. What more could you like? So on with the top tips. What I've got here is a big stash of watercolour paper. And I'm going to show you sort of our top 10 watercolour tips, okay? Hello to everybody that's watching this, this live. So first of all, quite a common problem that people have is colour mixing. How do you know how to mix colours? Well, if you're new to painting and you're sticking to primary colours, I want to show you something called the colour wheel. Let's take a look at that. So it's a great little exercise. If you've got a spare 10 minutes, get something round and actually draw around this. So if I just pop a little bit of a circle in there, draw around it. And a colour wheel is always going to be at the top of the list for me because it's an essential thing to learn. If you're new to painting, and I'm sure there's people here that aren't new, but some people are. I've popped a red there. That's natural red or alizarin crimson. We'll get a bit closer into that so you can see. I'll pop a nice light yellow in there. Now, the yellow I'm using here could be cadmium yellow, but in this case, it's natural yellow light. These are my own range of paints. A good exercise to learn primary colour mixing here, folks. And then we need some kind of a blue. So the blue I'm using in my particular case is going to be natural blue. Pop that there. You could use ultramarine or cobalt. That is primary colours squirted 
in a circle. Yes, you are watching somebody squirt paint on a circle. What more could you possibly want from your day? If we grab a size six brush with a bit of water, a bit of kitchen paper is always good, paper towel, and we're gonna take some water and we're gonna move the water from the yellow. I'm gonna go that side with the yellow as well. So we are showing you how primary colors work, the color wheel. Now, the new book talks about this in depth. Clean the brush really well. We'll take the red, we'll move it towards the, the yellow. We'll give it a bit of a squidge. So we'll drag the red. Now notice it starts to get towards an orange. Burgundies, orange start to come through, ambers into the yellow. So already we've taken two colours and we've made probably five or six colours. Clean the brush again. Let's do the same with the blue. Let's take the blue. And of course we'll take a decent chunk of blue, perfect for skies, this colour. We'll move it over towards the yellow, a bit more water just to help the paint flow. And of course it starts to go a bit sort of teal, a bit, not turquoise, but a bit sort of deep blue. Keep going and then it starts to go green and of course it, eventually it goes even more green. So again, we've taken two colours, yellow and blue, and we've turned them into probably six or seven colours. Look at the variations of, if we drag the blue further over, look how you get that lovely yellow to blue tinge. We'll do the same from the red. Now this gets more interesting when you start to bring in all three colours. So we're taking the three primaries and we're turning them into secondary. Now if you're new to painting, which I'm sure a lot of people watching this are, this is a great little thing to do to sit down just to get your mind into how colours mix. So the blue mixes with the red, you've got like a deep almost a shadow colour, moving into purple, moving into light mauve colours and again so you've created a huge mix. Now if we take a blob of each colour and pop it in the middle, this will create a key colour. Now a key colour is a shadow colour. I call it natural grey. Essential. This is how you do natural grey. Blue. Add a bit of red. Add a bit of yellow. And can you see it's turned into a lovely grey. That colour is so important to get right. And that leads me on to my second tip. And my second tip, I'll move that out of the way. My second tip um, is going to be on shadows. So shadows, I mean, I've got to say this. If you've watched me paint for quite a few years, whatever, shadows are so, so important. I can't stress it enough, but shadows are very important things to learn. But you look around my man cave slash studio and you see shadows if you look inside that kitchen roll <laughs> you can see my eye but can you see it's dark in there it's dark in here and it's dark in there because it's in shadow shadows are dark look at this pinball machine it's turned off at the minute but look how dark it is inside that pinball machine so you paint it dark you paint it black you paint it gray but that's the wrong thing to do the wrong thing to do is to use any colour that contains black or anything dark. So what you want to do is you want to mix your grey, just like we did here, from those three primary colours. And that is what shadows are all about. Now a great exercise is to actually sketch in a building and paint it 100% with shadows. So that then leads me on to two tips. So tip two and three is going to be how to draw a building because that's a common problem people have and then tip three is how to use shadows let's tie tie two tips together because tying two tips together is quite a good thing to tie tips tie two tips tips pg tips is a wonderful cup of tea if you like a brew tie two tips pg tips we're going to tie tips two and three together to make one giant tip did that make sense no good good I'm pleased. Right, we've got a ruler, a good old traditional wooden ruler. Let's draw a line across here. I've got a HB pencil. Let's do perspective and sketching buildings. This is tip two, and then we'll have tip three. Line goes across, perfect. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pop a little spot here, and pop a little spot here. These two spots, are 
the vanishing points. That's where the buildings disappear to in the distance. This line, this is your eye. This is your eye level. This is your horizon. This is this is what you're looking at. We'll take this ruler. We'll pop in a line. We're going to go quite dark with the pencil here. So I'm actually going to switch out and use a 2B pencil because you'll see it better. And I'll, I'll just I'll just keep it simple. So I'm going to do a line that's two centimeters above and two centimeters below that line. It's vertical. What we'll do is we'll we'll take these two points and we'll move them with a very faint line towards the vanishing point, like so. Both sides. Now all these kind of tips are in that book, plus hundreds more, so do check out the new watercolour companion. So those guidelines, we can slot some parallel lines, parallel to that first one. We'll pop one here, and we'll pop one there. Notice it's parallel, you can see it's parallel, can't you? Pop it down. So we're starting to create a three-dimensional cube here. This is a great way to understand perspective, keeping it simple. What we'll do is we'll go up to here, and we'll join those lines together. Now bear in mind that that line I've sketched in, that is central, that's central to this point. Now this point wants to go down to there. Let's do like a little bit of an old barn or something. We'll bring that down, guideline. Pointing towards this. Let's sketch in some faint lines that all match. Use a ruler if you wish. These lines go all the way along and eventually that line matches that line, which gives you the perfect, the perfect roof in perspective we've got a building we've got a building how do you put a chimney on let's put a chimney on what we'll do for the chimney is we'll we'll work using the same logic okay well have quite a big chimney so you can see it we'll pop the middle line on middle line from the top come down to the vanishing point you don't have to use this method all the time but what's interesting is that you can use it and it just it's a good way to understand how perspective works what we'll do is we'll drop a line down there and we'll mount that across put that across notice i'm using the guidelines and there's a nice juicy chimney in perfect perspective can't go wrong can you what we'll do now is we'll show you how to put the windows in start off with your line of windows most buildings pretty much windows will follow a line so what you do to get them right is you use that initial line to do guidelines See the guidelines, and then you can have as many windows as you like, but I only want to. But they will have the perfect pitch, the perfect angle. Ace. And then if you were to do a door, it depends how much of a detailed fan you are. But to get the perfect angle of the door, you would go from the tip, the top, to there. And that will go in. And that's what perspective is. That's what you call two-point perspective there's so much more to learn about perspectives let's pop a line here and then the top and bottom of that line will go down towards this vanishing point and then you connect it up and you've got a building you have a building that's how perspective works okay give it a bit of a practice and it's quite a nice thing to try out if you if you're new to sketching and you struggle to draw things that that's quite a nice little tip to do but that's my kind of second tip my third tip is back to shadows and let's get to the palette and let's get that gray mix now you can buy ready-made beautiful uh, natural gray it's a gorgeous color and um, it is the it is that color that we spoke about here with the three primary colors ready mixed it's available to buy on watercolor tv the book as we mentioned goes through colors in detail but to mix the color yourself and i'm going to do this now with primary colors you so there's natural gray or you can basically take the blue take the blue add a little bit of red practice this one the most popular color we sell is natural gray um for, for good reason because the shadows feature in every picture there's the blue and then we'll throw in the yellow which is just loitering on the edge of the palette there take some of that yellow Got a bit dirty but it'll it'll make gray it'll make gray and then we have a gray coming through beautiful of course you can make the gray as thick as you like as strong as you like but it's not going to be too strong for this, this little picture and then to make this thing look 3d using shadows natural gray never use paint gray never use lamp black never use neutral tint too dark what we'll do is we'll make this thing look like a three-dimensional building by popping the shadows in so there's mr sun 
See? He's pointing this way. That's Mr. Sunshine. It's like a hedgehog. Pointing down. Where's your light coming from? We'll pop that on. Pop that on there. Pop that on there, son. Pop it on now then. Bring it down. And we'll block in that side a bit more. Clean the brush. Clean the brush really well. A couple of quick taps on tissue. That's a little tip for you in its own right. Two taps on tissue. Remove just the right amount of water to allow me to blend that shadow and fill in that gable end of this little building thing. There you go. That's just me using a bit of water, you see. So I'm just going to paint a monochrome just using the grey. But look how nice that grey is. It's, it's, it's a perfect shadow colour. We'll put the same colour underneath the eaves. Put the same colour underneath the eaves. That's important. Clean brush, couple of taps. And then we'll soften it down. Now look how that... When you soften it down, look how you can sort of go under the roof line. Beautiful. It is the most common colour is grey. And natural grey is the most popular one of all. Because I'm using 50 shades of grey today, folks, I'm going to paint in the roof here just with the grey as well. But it's the same grey. Yes, I could make it thicker. The advantage to uh, using um, natural grey ready-made in the tube is that you can you can easily control the consistency notice these lines follow the pitch proper pop a line across the top to clean it up a little bit pop a couple of little lines every so often it just makes it look like looks like an old kind of cottage kind of thing beautiful little building there um, i'm just going to darken just the l shape on the corner of that chimney why have i done that because i want it to stand out against the white um, i clean the brush Notice I wiped the brush almost dry and the reason for that is because I wanted to um, get the impression of the paint not blending away too far. If you've got a big area to work on then you can just do the couple of quick taps but if you want to blend a lot of paint away that's when you tend to be a little bit more careful about where you pop your colour. So we'll get the... we'll get the shadow in there. Nice, um, and then what we'll do is we'll pop a shadow inside the windows here. So we're just going to paint an L shape inside the windows. We'll come back to the windows in a minute, but we're going to pop an L shape in. Um, we'll do the door separately. The window there is a bit wet to do it. We'll come back to that. Clean the brush, wipe it dry. Um, just using water just to blend that in. And look how, when I blend it away, how that's now set back against the actual object down here. Down that edge, across the bottom, make it stand out against the scene. Bit of water, a couple of quick taps, and then blend that in. But look how these, this grey, this monochrome object is starting to come alive on your paper. You're creating a building. For something like the doorway, you'd be much heavier with your consistency. So what you'd do there is you'd go really quite thick, but you'd still do it as an L shape leaving that light piece so you can clean your brush, wipe it almost dry. And that'll create a doorway that's kind of open, which to me always works really well. I want to pop in a bit of a, pop in a couple of windowsills. So if you're new to painting, it's important to learn what grey is. It might seem a boring thing and I'm sure you pretty much want to get stuck straight into, you know, painting landscapes and stuff, but building's a key. And a few things that people struggle with is drawing them. So having that little, perspective tips quite nice and then having a little tip on how to mix the perfect grey I can't say enough how important that little tip is on mixing grey mixing the right consistency the right tone of grey um, what I want to do here is pop in some windows now which is using a strong grey and I'm just painting little rectangular shapes to give the actual window some form And even if I just use the grey just to pop in a few little little shadows. I mean, bear in mind, if you look at the grey here, you can dilute it massively. Another good tip is to wipe off the excess colour from your brush. So you've got what you call a dry brush. And a dry brush is useful for giving texture and tone. And then a little mini little white cottage that I'm sort of doing here is quite 
a nice little exercise to learn. Make sure you pop some, because this gets kind of missed off, make sure you pop some, some little brickwork on the on there. Um, if I really dilute the colour massively, massively dilute it so it's gone really really pale, you can use that and you can actually paint a little bit of a winter scene here. Put some little put a shadow casting from the building first. And you could actually sort of pop some little shadows here, say there's a bit of snow built up at the side. Bit of water. So basically what I'm doing is I'm I'm sort of making like a bit of a wintry snow covered sort of area in the foreground just to make a little bit of a scene. So I'm making like a bit of a trackway, a bit of a footpath kind of thing. And that'll give a nice impression of uh, like a bit of a distant sort of snow scene. And to prove that natural grey recedes really well, if we was to pop a line across that horizon line that we actually sketched in at the beginning, and quite quite loosely, if I sketch in some vertical lines, I mean, I'm doing this very quickly, but look how that colour recedes, look how it falls away. It's important that it you get that recession because the distance that you've created and that little mini watercolour monochrome picture, obviously I forget the hedgehog in the sky, but that really I think is a lovely example of what um, grey is all about and why grey works so well. Let's pop in a bit of a, it's quite nice this little sort of loose painting session, it's a nice artistic hangout is what we're going to call it aren't we? So let's pop in some little, like a little bit of a pine tree at the back there. So yeah it's good, it's nice, I like it. Hope you've enjoyed that little demo. So that's kind of my sort of second, I want to hide the hedgehog, that's kind of, that's kind of my second little sort of tip really, or oh, it's my third tip, um, is you know how to use grey, why is grey so important and why working from primary colours is important. Now as a few people in the live chat have mentioned, you can go out and you can buy my colours and, and that is natural grey, it's available to buy online, um, if I get you the, you can see it on screen there. It's a beautiful, beautiful colour and it is that exact same colour ready-made so it's a beautiful one to work on, it really is. There's a full range of colours, there's like, like 14 colours in total so do check them out if you've not had a chance already. The greens are quite nice because green paint is always quite difficult. Now there's quite a lot of people watching so thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day and while we're here um, let me show you that little bit of a plug for the new book, The Watercolour Companion folks. Here it is, if you've not picked up a copy, if you bought one recently please do leave a nice review on Amazon, I would appreciate that, but this is the new book. Um, if you buy them from Watercolour TV you can get a signed and numbered first edition with a certificate to prove it is me that's actually signed it as well. It's a beautiful book that will take you through all sorts of watercolour techniques, you think well how would Matthew paint waves and sea spray? Ah, watercolour companion tells me. So it doesn't show you how to paint a picture as such, it shows you how to do the individual elements of that and that is quite key isn't it, that little thing is really key. Here's a little bit more information, a little 30 second clip on what the watercolour companion is all about so do check this out folks. Here we go. Hi, I'm Matthew Palmer and my new book, The Watercolour Companion, is a hardback reference guide that you keep by your side at all times. The perfect size to fit in your watercolour kit. It's got pages of colour mixes, it's got reference images to work from, it's got what materials you need, how to paint finished pictures. This indispensable guide is designed to be by your side at all times on your watercolour journey. The book is available now. There you go, so that's what the Watercolour Companion is, that says it all basically folks, it's a brand new book as of July 2022 20, and you can get a signed 
uh, version on this website here or the w's.walkcolor.tv. Also, what you can do is you can check out this, of course, which is the next live workshop coming up on Sunday, the 31st of July. Do you fancy painting a koala bear or a koala as the official title is? I'll just get that in there. Uh, paint a beautiful koala bear perched in a eucalyptus tree. That's the workshop for Sunday. Virtual, what does that mean? Virtual workshop. Um, what it means is that I need to turn that advert off. That's what it means. And it means I need to pop on that little screen at the bottom. I love live streaming. My mind's not on the job today too much, is it? There we go. That's gone. Okay, so if you'd like to take part in a live virtual watercolor workshop, the website's got them all on. And what you do basically is you pay your £10 fee and you use three colours, primary colours, red, yellow, blue, and you can join Paint Along. How many people in the chat are taking part in that workshop that's happening on Sunday? This is Sunday the 31st. If you can't be there on Sunday at 10am, it doesn't matter because you can paint along at any time. As it says here, it's yours to keep forever. It's yours to keep forever, so you can basically watch it live or watch it at any time. Starts at 10 a.m. UK time. There's a link to book it in the description below, and for £10, it's a no-brainer. You can't go wrong. Let's move on to the next tip. Now, so we're on to tip number four, racing through these. Uh, for me, another problem people have, and this is me sort of teaching painting for 25 years, looking at people's problems, painting problems, um, is the fact that you can um if you order a book from here we are shipping worldwide i just i've noticed a comment saying that the book is not actually landing in the us until september if you want to be one of the first people to get the book in america we are shipping them worldwide from here so signed and numbered copies are going worldwide that's to uh to ken a check it out um yeah Painting figures, painting figures. How do you paint figures? How do you paint people? How do you paint people? Again, that book, that companion is all about, um, you know, how to paint people, how to paint figures, that kind of thing. Let me show you how simple it is to paint figures in a scene. This is my fourth tip, my top tip. Watching people for all these years, they do struggle. Um, so if we jump over to the palette, what we'll do is we'll grab some red this is just a natural red and what we'll do with the red here is we'll paint in a carrot we'll paint in a carrot yes a carrot the classic carrot a little bit scraggy go down to a point there is a carrot you can make the arms a bit longer should you wish okay we'll clean the brush what we'll do now you've got an option here of using skin tones or straight in to darkness. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here we've got my skin tone light and skin tone dark. These are ready-made colors, part of the natural range, all available online. If I take the light skin tone, grab it, pop it there, back to this picture here, and we'll pop in the blob for the head. There's the head. Let's get a bit closer into this, shall we? We can do that, can't we? Pop the blob for the head. And then what we'll do is we'll use some of that grey. You've learnt how to mix it, but if you get yourself natural grey, it's ready to use. It's the same grey that we just used uh, a few moments ago on the cottage, the house. And we'll paint in the, the legs, if you like, and then we'll pop in some dark hair. And then you've got a figure. Now, what you can do is you can go a little bit further by popping lines between the arms. And if your light or your hedgehog is coming down from this side, what's stopping you adding a lovely shadow with a quick flick of your brush? Beautiful. Now, that person would work fine in a watercolour. If you want some distant people, you can be a little bit more loose. Let me show you what I mean by distant people. So I can still use that same colour. So if you just pop in some little tiny carrots, we'll have a couple of red carrots. Just smaller. We can just use any colour we like here. So we'll get some blue, maybe. Put some blue spots and these are quite loose really pop some in between there as well some different colors and then we'll even use some gray because we want some darkness don't we put some little lines coming down and, and notice i'm not just painting all carrots i'm painting some just lines a group of people walking through the streets of london or if you've ever seen the walking dead that's a herd um, and what we'll do is we'll pop in 
the little tiny spot for the head. And you've basically got a group of people waddling. Now, you probably can't see this actually. I'm going to try and over here, I want to, I don't normally do this, but I want to turn the camera that way a little bit. And there's a painting here, as well as a drunken Donkey Kong sign. There's a painting here, which you can't see that well, of a football ground. I got commissioned to do this quite a few years ago. And all the crowd on that picture is actually done using that exact same method. It's Mansfield Town. Mansfield Town is the picture. You can see the painting on the website, actually. Um, yeah. And pop some shadows on, pop shadows on. But that's basically how you paint people. Nice and easy. Get some little shadows and various things. And you've got a little little crowd of people there in the distance and a large person in the foreground. But how would you paint a dog? How would you pop a dog into this picture? We can pop a dog on this picture, can't we? We'll do a dog. Let's have a dog here. You do an M shape for a dog. Start with an M shape. Yep, fill in the body. The dog. This one's a Shih Tzu, which is a zoo we know animals, and we'll pop in the tail and we'll pop in the head. And weirdly, just having three legs, that's a bit of a poodle, maybe, is enough to do the job. Let's give this dog a lead. Let's pop a shadow on. You need a shadow, don't you? And let's give this person a bit of a carrier bag or something, or like an umbrella, maybe. Just, it just gives a nice bit of interest. So that's how, how to paint quick figures. You can revisit these and pop little bits of grey on them at your leisure, but that's just a quick and easy way of painting figures. So like distant figures, slightly mid-ground figures. If you wanted to do something much more close up and you know and detailed, that's when you want to be getting something like this watercolour companion, because this shows you in detail how to do figures, but there's a section which I'm not going to be able to find now because bear in mind we are live. Oh, there you go. There's a section on how to paint close-up figures and the correct colour mixing for the particular skin tone from dark all the way through. But yeah, so that's kind of tip number four for me there. Paint, painting figures, it's always a nice thing. Let's move on to the next one. Now, trees, always, always problematic. People have big trouble having trees. And if I cast my mind back to when I was, you know, sort of 10, 12, I struggled to paint trees. There's no doubt about it. Summer trees. I mean, when I started painting up until the age of sort of 15, 16, I've been painting for five or six years then. Summer trees used to sort of baffle me. So what I did is actually uh, in 1999, I went away and designed some brushes which we had manufactured. And there were these things here. Look, These are Matthew Palmer tree and texture brushes, you can see them there. Look, and these are a really simple way of, of look at that beautiful sort of tip of the brush, a gorgeous way to paint um, easy foliage. I'll show you the brushes, but we have a new-ish version of the brushes, a 2022 version, I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna dig them out for you now and show you them. And these are called, the Matthew Palmer fantastic brushes if I show you them here and um, there's a set of three and again you can check them all out on the website folks but these are the brushes let me hide my face so the camera there you go these are the fantastic brushes and these are beautiful there's three of them and it's literally called if I hold it close up you can see the brush is called Matthew Palmer fantastic it's the it's a very similar hair to what's in that tree brush but a little bit tweaked okay and I want to show you how simple it is to paint a tree with one of these beautiful brushes. I want to use the medium sized one for this. Let's have a quick, a quick summer tree. We'll start off with a nice clean brush. And I've simply dampened the brush. I'll pick up on one side of the brush some natural green light. I'll put the colour there, natural green light. You can see the brush has just got half that on. On the opposite side, we'll pick up the darker green which is just natural green. These are ready-made colors designed to make your painting life nice and easy. Natural green, natural green light. So looking at the brush, you can see the brush quite clearly there. If the camera decides to, there you go. Look how it's got the two colors on. Beautiful. 
Isn't that good? What we'll do is we'll basically lay this brush flat. This is a medium fantastic brush. We'll lay it flat center screen and we're gonna go squidge, 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 okay? Squidge is the sound effect. Look at that, it's giving you shadows. Now, we can go further. We can go further. We can, we can basically come back to the palette. We can put that brush in somewhere clean, mix it, and stipple it. Squidge, 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 squidge. And don't be afraid to squidge it because the squidging is what makes the brush do its magic. Look how the brush has gone all spiky and nice and randomized. Abuse the brush, abuse the brush. That's what you need to do, folks. Look at the squidginess of the brush. Let's get close in. Beautiful squidgy brush. Can you tell I sometimes work on shopping telly? What we'll do here is we'll take that brush. It's kind of mixed all together now. And we'll stipple around the edge to make the tree look a little bit more fluffy. So basically, this is a mixture of all the colours. Like so. And there you've got the foliage of a tree. We can put a bit more work to this. I mean, I'm doing this for speed. You can obviously take as much time as you like on this. And then what we'll do is we'll clean that brush. So that's the fantastic brushes. We'll take that brush uh, clean and we'll pick up this brush, which is actually um, one of the newer brushes. This is a super point brush, um, Matthew Palmer super point brush. This is a lovely tool um, for day to day. This is the small one here. We're gonna use this. We're gonna take a color which I designed for trees and branches. It's called natural brown. We're gonna take some natural brown. There it is. I will mix it with a bit of gray, so it's a little bit darker. So feel free to mix your own colors, obviously, but here I'm using my own colors. Why wouldn't I? I've got them. It makes life easier. And what I'll do here is I'm gonna paint in a bit of a trunk that weaves through of the tree, like so. Every so often I'll pop in a line let me tilt it forward a bit, you can see it better now, can't you? So I'm painting in a few lines of this tree here, and popping a few branches, but it's nice to leave a bit of a gap every so often. Let's bring in a few sort of key branches. Just a couple of little lines here and there, so you can see it weaving through. If I clean my brush at this point, and actually what you can try at this stage, and this one's up to you, this one's optional. Um, I've got these things, which are palette knives. And if you use a palette knife, you can actually scratch in some, you can remove a bit of colour. I'm sure you've seen palette knives in craft shops and things, but you can actually sort of, you can scrape off little bits of light and just, while your paint is, is damp, if it's too dry, this ain't going to do anything, so I wouldn't worry. But it's just nice just to sort of weave in a little bit of, a little bit of twigs and branches. It's quite effective, yeah? But look at that gorgeous shadow that we've created um, from that tree. It's lovely, isn't it? It's just given a lovely sort of natural cast of of, of uh, shadow without any trouble whatsoever. It's just nice and easy, nice and straightforward, nice and clean. And when it dries, that will change again. Lovely one, lovely one. Okay, um, I'm just going to quickly finish that that tree off this is tip number five is it this one we're on i've lost track already is it five let me know in the comments i think it is um is it five or is this one six i'm not sure you tell me what we're gonna do is pop a little bit of a <laughs> lost lost my track i'm gonna pop a little bit of a greeny base to this thing here just to give it a bit of a thing there and we'll just pop a shadow in just with some of the gray from earlier this light's obviously coming across is this tip number five i think it is my mind's focusing on art. You can only do one thing at once. It is tip five. Tip five. Now this super point brush is really good because what you can do is you can rotate the brush um, quite nicely here. And it's got a lovely point. Now, if your point ever goes, and this is my next tip, which I'll get to in a second. But here, I'm gonna use this super fine, super point brush. Again, these are all available on the old website here. Let's pop in a bit of a gateway or at least the edge of a gateway. And of course there's a bearded chuff perched on the top of that one. But there is a little bit of a, a tree. A oh, lovely little tree. I mean, how simple was that? I do have a practice at that. If your brush ever loses, this is, it's a simple tip I can tell you. 
um, if your brush ever loses its point or if it loses its clarity, so this is tip six, how do you, because people often will, will take a water pot and leave the brushing like that. I mean, I see that all the time at painting workshops, that's something that you shouldn't be doing for two reasons. One reason is the water creeps into the wood and the, and the paint can flake off. But secondly, secondly, if your brush is left in water for long periods, obviously what's going to happen, it's going to end up with a bent tip. And let's face it, nobody in life wants a bent tip, do they? So how do you restore the brushes? It's a simple trip uh, tip for number six. All you do is get some extremely hot water, preferably boiling. Now, obviously, be careful. I'm telling you now to get supervision, be careful. Get letters from your parents and you dunk it in the boiling water for a few seconds, take it out and your brush will come back to new, especially with these beautiful uh, super point brushes because it's such a soft bristle. These are the super point brushes, folks. If they lose the point, boiling water will cure it. If, if boiling water doesn't work, it means that you've not, your brush is beyond repair, but boiling water will fix and straighten the brush. It's a simple tip, but it's useful. Have a look at this tray now, it's dried. Isn't that good? Beautiful tree. Really, really nice. That was good. Really enjoyed doing that one. I hope you enjoyed doing it too. Now, I mentioned the other uh, brushes. Let's move on to tip seven. We've painted a close-up tree using the fantastic brushes. Now let's look at painting some trees that are in the distance. Some sort of depth kind of trees. And what we'll do is we'll use this here. Um, this painting that we've just done of this little sort of oak tree we'll come back with the zoom a little bit and we're going to take some masking tape actually and we're going to remove stickiness wipe the moisture from the brown and we'll lay that down probably about here somewhere so you've got a nice edge okay let's now paint in some distant trees. Let's paint in some distant trees and for this we're going to take a look at the classic and the original Matthew Palmer tree and texture brushes. Now these are probably the most popular ones next to the branch and detail brushes that we sell. Um, a set of three or a set of four you've got a large a medium and a small you can see the angle tip to them it's made from the same bristle as this but a different shape and these are wonderful for painting distant trees. I'm going to use the large one here. These have been around since the late 90s. These are, these are tried and tested by many artists, really are. What we're going to do here, folks, is we're going to mix together some yellow and blue. So you get a bit, or mix the two natural greens together. So just mix an average green, just a middle green pull the brush. It's always good to have a bit of kitchen paper at hand to do that, remove the excess. Let's see the brushing action. Brushing action, so like a BBC primetime documentary show. Distant trees, and massive trees, a woodland in the distance, we're going to taper these off. With every tap of the brush you get a tree if you like. What I'm going to do here though is I'm going to put that brush away and change to the small one. Same brush just just like two-thirds smaller. Um, water on the brush nothing else and we're going to stipple and we're going to fade. I'm going to soften the top a little bit we're going to fade these down and we'll let that disappear into the back of that tree we just painted. You can play around with play around with the heights Let it disappear off, let it fade away into the distance. There's also a medium sized one of these brushes as well, which is really quite effective. And the medium one is quite nice because the medium one will give you um, medium sized stipples. This is the most, if you're buying just one, buy the medium one. Look, uh, with every tap of the brush, you can get that nice little variant of height. Now, it's always important to add shadows. We were talking a lot about pinball machine shadows 
let's get into the palette let's get some gray beautiful bit of gray beautiful don't be afraid to use natural gray quite heavy at this particular point medium tree brush check them out online folks all of them are available online um and of course if you're buying them from watercolor tv you're buying them direct from me which is which i'm very grateful for thank you and um, let's bring that across so we've added shadows now quite often with these sort of trees by the time you come to put your shadows in your paint's too dry so what you can do is you can clean your brush really well and you can give the brush a bit of a tip tappy soften kind of thing so it blends in reactivates if you've got them palette knives i've got i've got all sorts of crap back here can i say crap can i get away with saying crap there's all sorts of crap back here Now what we'll do is we'll use this just to scrape in some little little flicks. Little flicks of your brush. Look at that, beautiful. Little little scratches. It just gives it a nice bit of sort of distance. I'm quite a fan of these sort of trees to actually well if you take the tape off first, nice and steady. Look at you've got that distant sort of tree line there. We'll do something else with that picture in a minute, don't worry. Trust me, I'm an artist. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a six, six super point again and I want to take some of these greens, doesn't matter which one we've been using. Notice I always give it a tap on tissue first and basically folks at the top of these trees I always think just add a few individual spots with your brush like this just a few little sort of random dots around it just helps to give a bit more variation to the trees. I always think that. I was quite a fan of doing that sort of thing. But you can see that little bit of added. Now, if you, if you want to break things up a little bit here, um, always come back to the grain. Don't be afraid to be quite dark at the bottom. That's always a nice thing to do. What I want to do uh, just quickly is, is paint in the grassy area now, just to give this a bit more of a base. Um, so I've got the size 10 super point brush. Clean it down. Not too heavy with the colour. I'm just going to go in. And we'll, we'll continue what we painted here. And we'll just give this some kind of a, a sort of field type effect going off. Notice I can reactivate paint. That's a useful trick as well. Look at that, you've created a meadow. Reactivating your colour is quite important. Watercolour can easily be washed up and lifted out. So I'll pop that in there. Um, light's coming in. Where's your light? It's coming in from the left. And I want to pop in a bit of a shadow here, just using some of the greens. Now that shadow could be anything from a from a cloud passing by to a hedgerow or something. It doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that I'm just using green for this, and I'm adding some some darker variations to the actual grassy meadow. And we'll do some shadows coming down with the grey. Remember the grey? I've still got it, look, from earlier. Right there, son. Right there. Beautiful. And that makes the trees look as though they're a bit more 3D, don't it? Look how nice that is, that little sort of mini picture we've created. And look at the light here. This is all done. All done with having the right brushes for the right job really does make a difference, don't it? It's good fun. And that's made a lovely little scene, folks. Now, that was tip seven, with a bit extra thrown in for good measure. Uh, and I'd like to do skies, a simple sky um, for tip eight. Um, skies are obviously, you know, an essential, but some people get a little bit too kind of carried away. Um, so let's bring in some a sky into this picture and show you a nice little simple sky. So we're creating a scene here, aren't we, as well? Which is which which is nice. It's nice. I've got a round coin here. That's an old. So it's not old, it's a round coin, so you could put the moon on or the sun with that as well. That's another tip. So we'll tie we'll tie a couple of tips into one. Um, let's do tips eight and nine here. We'll take some kitchen paper, we'll fold it in half, one of my favourite little things to do. And cup the coin. Cup the coin. Now if your tissue paper is a little bit blobby, just kind of on your table, give it a flat and it'll soon work. And we can paint in the sky a bit of a sunset i'm thinking so what i would do for this i would keep this thing nice and simple and i would use quite a big brush for the sky 
make sure the brush and the water's clean. My water's not particularly clean, but it's clean enough to do the job. Okay, so I want to wet the area, being careful not to go too close to that tree, so, because if water touches this, it's going to wash it off, and we don't want that, do we? So I'm wetting loosely up to it, okay? Only loosely. And I will show you where the water's gone in a minute once I've put two coats of water. Without a doubt, you want two coats of water on your watercolour painting, folks, all right? Two coats of water. Really quite important that you do that. Beautiful. Now, if I give that a bit of a wobble, you can possibly see the water. You can kind of see I've left a bit of a... It's hard to show that on screen, but you can... It's left a bit of a halo, basically. So I'm working loosely up to it. Loosely around and in between. Super. Now, what we're going to do next is we are going to take some nice bright colours. So we'll take some orange. In fact, I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm going to use a size 10 for this. It doesn't matter what size brush, whatever comfortable to you. Natural orange. Get that in there. And we're going to go in and put some deep orange coming down. little flick on that side as well just to give variation but notice I'm sweeping the brush sweeping the brush down for that that sky in the brush we'll take some violet um, or blue but I'd rather use violet here because it'll prevent the paint going green with orange so we'll get a bit of an evening sky bring it in now, notice the cross action. Can you see the cross of the brush? The cross action lets the paint mix together and it makes the sky look, let's come back a bit with the camera, and it makes the sky look nice and pleasy. Pleasy, pleasing. Beautiful. Now, at this point, I'm just going to use water. Make sure you clean the brush well. And any little bits that are looking a bit ugly, little halos and outlines and water lines, you can just soften them in. Normally what you do is you paint the sky before you do the tree, but we're kind of working backwards here, just show you that you can actually do it. And then if we take this and pop it there, you get the sun. The coin wrapped in tissue. An old, old round coin of some kind. Even better than that, we can put some little clouds in this thing. So just to make the sky a little bit more interesting. We keep referring back all the time, natural grey, natural grey, always crops up, don't it? Um, so we've got natural grey here, which we're going to be using right now. We've got the colour. And we're going to go in, tapping off the tissue. And if the paint is still wet, we can just do a little bit of a twisty Palmer cloud. I'm using just this medium super point brush. And the paint is still damp, so a little bit of a cloud. Do a little twist action. And because that sun's underneath the cloud, what you could do there is clean the brush, squeeze it through your fingers. And actually, use the edge of the brush to lift off the underneath of that grey. The sky works without the cloud, but I wanted to just try and squeeze as much as I can into these, these tips and techniques. Beautiful. Nice, yeah? So that's given a lovely little cloud. So contained within this Matthew's Tip Top Tips, and can I say Andrew Mayer, just a big shout out to you, because Andrew Mayer has just popped in a, a, a one pound Super Chat donation. Andrew, thank you so much for your generosity. Those donations, those Super Chat donations go right back into the running of this channel and it keeps the paint flowing. So thank you, Andrew Mayer. You're very kind as always. Now let's move on to the final tip, but we'll just take one final look at this. We've made a little landscape scene, folks. We started off with the tree, distant trees out of the meadow, and we've popped that in there. So the final tip, because there's a couple of tips thrown in the sky, the final tip for me is coming up next. And this is going to be kind of jumping back to the subjects that were already painted. Let's talk a little bit about some of the cool mediums that you can buy for watercolour. What do I mean by mediums? I mean things like 
Aquashine, for example. So a simple little technique to finish on. This is a very popular product. We sell it online, folks. It's called Aquashine. It's a beautiful, sparkly medium. And if we look at the picture here that we did, let's get close into this. Let's get close into this. This winter scene can be brought alive with some aqua shine. Now this is quite an old bottle, so you can see that the lid has kind of got a bit stuck on. Now it's probably quite difficult to see, but you can see it's sparkling. It is absolutely beautiful, this stuff. Aqua shine. What you do is you pop it on your brush and you can see the brush already has a sparkle to it. But on this picture, we're going to paint it in the snow. And it's not glitter. It is a pearlescent powder and mica and various other things. And what it will actually do, and I know you probably can't see it that well, but you'll see it more in a minute, is it will make your, your winter scenes, your lakes, your sunsets sparkle. And it's just, it's not in your face. It's very, very incidental is Aquashine. Um, I'm sure some of you have actually got Aquashine. Now, if you look here, can you see what it's doing? As it catches the studio lights, it's beautiful stuff. So it's quite a casual stuff. It makes a winter scene look frosty. I don't know whether you'll see it on this camera here. You might do, let's see if you can. Yeah, you can kind of just about, yeah, if I do that, you can probably trying to get it so you can see it because it, it is hey, look at that beautiful there you go now i have to sort of reflect it against the light because it's a similar it's a similar substance to what they throw into metallic car paint basically but it's designed for watercolors and what's really good about it is the fact that you can use it in three ways so number one like that you can you can lay it down over the top of your painting just put it on and it puts a sparkle on but it's a sparkle that's not always there you sort of walk past it and think oh and you sort of look back at the picture it's like that because it's really really well done it's very subtle with a silent b that's one way to use it the second way to use it is to use it literally by mixing it with your color so if you get over to the palette here you can literally mix up a color so i'm just going to wipe away some of this color here so if I was to take some natural violet here and if I take a couple of brush blobs of that and pop it in there, you've now got a colour that sparkles and that colour will remain through it. So this is the second way to use Aquashine. It's one of my favourite little things. And on here, we could add some into this picture here and we could put a nice kind of violet shadow in the foreground. I'm just using water to blend it into the snow. And what that'll do is it'll make the paint have the sparkle at the point of application and again you can probably just about see it if i give it a shimmer try it on the overhead one again it's quite hard to see on there but you can you can sort of see where it kind of it really is getting the happy spot for this there you go you can see it there so you can mix it with your color that's more subtle than putting it direct on third way third way is literally to take a blob of a cap full and actually tip it in your water. So actually tip it into your water. I'm not going to do that now because it's a waste. But if you tip a cap full of aqua shine in your water pot, the entire picture will have a sparkle to it. That's really good, yeah? That is really good. Um, great for winter scenes, great for um, sunsets, great for skies. On the picture that we did here, this one here, because it's got this kind of meadow kind of thing going off to it. This kind of sunny meadow. Maybe it's rained, possibly. It is the British summer. Um, you could take some Aquashine and you could pop it on here and it will make the meadow have a little bit of reflection of the sun. A bit of a shine to it. And of course, there's nothing stopping you adding a little bit to the sun, but you wouldn't do too much of that because it can make it look a bit It'll be cool. But look at that light. You can see it instantly. Beautiful stuff. I encourage you to pick up some of that, folks. It, and that bottle is probably five years old. It lasts an absolute age. It does aqua shine. 
Uh, it's very economical stuff, folks. But yeah, let's give that a bit of a wobble. You'll see it if I do that. Can you see the see the shine? What a pleasure that was. That was fun. That was a bit of a last minute demo, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Let me just quickly finish up by saying don't forget to join me. Yes, you need to be joining me, folks, because we do have a workshop coming up on Sunday. This Sunday, uh, I'll pop it here. Let me just reduce the size of this thing in a minute. Uh, bear with me while I get this thing working. Um, yeah, I had a few technical issues today, so just kind of bear with us, as it were. Um, we have a there it is, come back. We've got a workshop coming up Sunday, folks. If you want to paint along with me, just using three colours. Remember those, let me show you the thing. Because all you need for the workshop, it, it's got a bit messy now, to be fair. But all you need is those three colours, just the primary colours. It's kind of blobbed everywhere, but the yellow, the blue and the red is all you need to join in that workshop. Here's more information. Paint a beautiful koala bear perched on a eucalyptus tree. It's a £10 workshop virtually. You're sat at home from the comfort of your own studio. You can wear whatever you like. I don't see you. You see me, but I don't see you. So it's one-on-one -on -one tuition for tenor. And here is the website, folks. So to book your space for £10, all you do is you go to the website, all the w's.watercolor.tv, top of the screen. You'll see a nice link that says book now, virtual workshop. If you're watching this after the 31st of July, uh, 2022 then obviously bear in mind that you can go back in and you can um, just click on whichever one's there and it'll take you to the latest one this particular one is the koala bear one and they can also purchase all of the previous ones as well and if you click on the workshop menu at the top of the screen come down to uh, previous live workshops you can actually um, view all of the ones we've done there's 108 of these last week's workshop was this one um, this beautiful kind of alpine scene. So it's a £10 workshop. Um, you can purchase all the previous ones as well. All the products are in the art shop, folks. Do check out the art shop on, on this website. There it is. There's those super point brushes. There's the tree brushes. All the paints and colours are there as well. And also, if you'd like to buy the new book, we've got a few left. Click on the little art book link, top of the screen. There it is, the brand spanking new watercolour companion tips and techniques to improve your painting that's what it is folks do please check it out a lot of hard work goes into these books and for a tenner it's great and also if you if you recently received a copy please head on over to amazon.co.uk and please leave me a review i'd love to get reviews reviews make quite a difference and so does a subscribe to the channel and a thumbs up like the video folks there's been a lot of people watching live thank you we've only got 50 likes but thank you give us a like give us a thumbs up give us a subscribe hit the notification bell and check out all the stuff including this workshop i will see you very soon take care